Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you Google Fusion Tables. That's part of Google Drive, and you've probably been on Google Drive to do things like create documents or to um, do presentations or even use the spreadsheet features there. It's all free and all you need is a Google account. Um, so you may have noticed when you hit create, there's Fusion Tables here. And what we're going to do is take the file that we had scraped from the Texas Music Office that has all the bands in um, Texas. And I put that into a spreadsheet after I scraped it from the site using Scraper Wiki. And the only thing I did here was I moved the genre column to the end here, and I used the text to columns feature to separate it on the commas that were um, within each one because that column actually had several genres separated by columns and I wanted them to be separated by commas, excuse me. And I wanted them to be in their own um, columns each so that we could look at primary genres or we could do things with the other genres so we could keep it all in the same line. I could have done the same thing with the URLs, but I'm not really gonna do anything with the URLs at this point, but there's also in the case where somebody has several websites that they want to post, their commas separated as well, and so we could separate those out into their own columns. Um, this is a pretty big spreadsheet. There's like 6,400 lines in it. So when I go to Fusion Tables here and I say Create Fusion Table, it allows me to choose from this computer the file that I want to upload. And I think I have it in Coding, Music, uh, the XLSX. Now, I've already done this. Um, it may take a few seconds for you to do that, but you would just go ahead and say next and go ahead and get that to import into um, Fusion Tables for you. So I have it here, music, my drive. And when we open it up in Fusion Tables, it looks pretty much like a spreadsheet. And you'll see the city, the name, the phone. Um, don't worry that the ID is here and not uh, the first thing. That's fine. And we have... Um, the genres here. So the first thing I want to do is um, take a look at filtering this information. And I want to look at the items in it so I can just see the bands that are from Austin. And that's easy to do with filter by city. And we can come over here and we can click on the city we want to filter. We could pick more than one if we wanted. We notice that Austin has a lot of bands. So we just click that, and here we get a nice view of just the bands from Austin. We can see how many are there, and we can um, actually download those out to another file if we wanted to, or we could create a view that we could do some further summarization on with that if we wanted to. Um, if we want to remove the filter, we just click X. And now we want to summarize. So we're gonna summarize on the city to see how many bands are in each city. We were kind of able to see it when we filtered, but we actually want a sheet that does that. So we want to say tools, summarize, and we want to summarize by city, and we wanna show the summary count, and that's it. So let's save that, and magically, we have all of the cities here, and we can see the count of their um, number of bands that they have. So it's sorted by city to see them in alphabetical order, um, but we have to do this, uh, do a few things to get this summary as a new table. So we're going to choose to download this as a CSV, and we want um, the summary rows, and be able to get that as a summary. And I've, again, already done that. So we can go back to Google Drive. Google Drive is always open as a separate tab over here. So I can look at this music summary spreadsheet here. So I can look at music summary over here and it's got all the cities and I can use this arrow here if I wanna sort them alphabetically by city or the arrow here for count to sort them from highest to lowest or vice versa. So we want to be able to plot this information in some sort of a chart. And because there's 524 of them, that's probably too many to have in a chart. Maybe we just want to look at the top ones that go all the way through San Marcos. So San Marcos has 48 registered bands and Austin is the highest with 1900. So if we were to say, um, put a filter on a range, we could look at say 40 to 2000. So we're going to filter on the count 
and I'm going to say 40 to 2,000 and see how many it finds. And yes, there are 11 of them here, so that was easy to do. And to be able to chart this, we want to click on this plus sign here, and we want to add a chart. And in this case, we can pick the chart we want. I'm going to pick this bar chart here. And this will allow us to look at each of the cities, and we can sort by city or by count. Maybe it's better to sort by count. Let's reverse that. And so we can see the largest to the smallest here. And let's add 11 here because we want all the categories. And then we have San Marcos here. So that was easy. We got the information into a Google Drive uh, Fusion table. We filtered it on what we wanted and we were able to create a chart. And um, there are ways that you can change the appearance of the chart. Lots of different options here for putting a title or changing things like colors, so play with those. And then when you're done, you just publish. And there's one step here where you have to make the chart public. So if it asks you to make the chart public, you want to do that. And then you can grab the embed code here and put it on your website. So very simple, easy to do, play with this. Um, a lot of power in being able to use Fusion tables. And the good thing about this is if we were to change anything in this spreadsheet, then it would automatically update this chart for us, even the embedded chart on the site. So that's really, really helpful. So now on your own, do the same thing for the primary genre. If you go back and look at the spreadsheet here, primary genre is genre one. So why don't you try on your own to do a fusion table pie chart with the top 11 genres or top 10 genres. Uh, see where a meaningful cutoff is for genres and then plot that on a pie chart. Now we want to do some mapping and mapping is really fun and easy to do in fusion tables as well. Um, we can actually map this chart because it has some locations here by city and fusion tables can recognize the cities here as locations. Um, we want to choose the map tab here and have it create a map of all the dots by city and the bands that are represented here and you can see the different bands and uh, you can actually change the feature style so you can change the icon here um, or you can change the info window for what it looks like. Now a lot of these bands are in the same city so in Austin there's obviously a lot of bands underneath here and we really can't get to them that way so that may not be the best way to show all the bands on this particular map. But the same thing here is if you decide to use this um, you can say tools publish and put this on your site. A heat map might be better in this case if you click heat map it'll show and you can adjust like the radius of uh, how big you want this to be and uh, the opacity of it to show um, on a map where the hot spots are for bands in Texas. And not surprisingly, it's Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston with a few things out in uh, El Paso. Um, so this is a pretty interesting chart to take a look at. And this may be more indicative of what we want to show about the cluster of bands in a particular area. So another thing that we can do if we have the right kind of data is um, use shape files to map items. So you can get shape files for things like states, county jurisdictions, in some cases if you have countries and you want to use shape files, and that way we can put data in and then have the shapes of, in this case, the states to show um, what it looks like, to show like which states have more or less. So I'm going to provide you with some crime data. Um, this one is called State Crime CSV. So if we bring this up, we see that we have each state and then we have violent crime, murder and robbery that was committed in each state. And then we also have a file for the shapes. And you can go online and search for state files. I have um, states KML. These are KML uh, files, keyhole markup language, the state KML. 
you get this file and you import it like a spreadsheet into fusion tables and it'll look kind of weird there's a bunch of um, coordinates here that sort of define the boundaries of that state that's going to be plotted on the map and we're going to merge this with the crime file so that we can map it so let's come over here to the crime file and we have all this data now imported in the same way that I had uh, imported things before, just directly from the Google Fusion table My Drive. So what we want to do is merge these files. So file merge. And it's going to say, you know, select a table that I want to merge with this. So this is the state KML. I'm just going to look it up because I have it. In here you might not have to look yours up because you might not have as many things as mine and then we want to be able to say you know what fields we're going to match so in this case we want to match the state in this table with also the state name in this table and that's the thing that's going to match it for us and then we say which items we want to put together in the spreadsheet we could choose to not have some of them show up but in this case I want to keep all of them um, so let's merge that and see what happens. So we should be able to see where the state matches up to the boundary description here. And that allows us to have these shapes associated with the state so that we can plot one of these measures when we do a map. So pretty cool. So now we want to map it. So we're going to click the plus sign and say add map. And let me focus in on the US. So you can already see some of the boundaries here being defined, but we don't have any designation yet for it to tell us which are larger or which are smaller. So if we say change feature styles and we go to the polygon fill colors, we pick gradient and we want to say show as a gradient and then in here we can put the range now this is saying our smallest is 122 this is for violent crime and our largest is 1330 so we can say use this range and that will automatically give four different designations if we wanted a fifth one we could do that and then we have five different breakpoints that would um, split these out into equal ranges so let's save this and see what it looks like and so we have this map and so we can see that the darker colors have more violent crime than the states with the lighter colors and again we can save this we can modify any of the features uh, and we can publish this as well and we can embed this and the cool thing about the maps is you can embed it the regular way or you can get the javascript and html and use the google api code that we learned how to use when we work with the google charts um, sometimes you want to have the buckets be specific numbers and not just equally broken out between the high and low. So you can actually pick buckets and you can add your own buckets with your own breakouts and pick the colors that you want and that makes it much more specific. So that's it. Um, you can now try to do a map each for murder and robbery. So try to do the same thing that I just did for violent crime, but make your map for murder and robbery.